Thank you very much, uh, Mr. CKR. Walke in Badu Nam Sadum Varela Matra Varela in Manadil Nam Varum Varela. Actually, there was a chemical engineer, a professor, who made a remark that right from morning till night, uh, we are actually using uh, chemicals. So when we get up, uh, the tooth uh, brush is a plastic chemical, the paste is a chemical, the soap is a chemical, shampoo is a chemical, and uh, when we use our cell phone, again that is a plastic chemical, till we go for our night uh, sleep, uh, even the mosquito or uh, repellent, whatever we use, uh, it's a chemical. So uh, chemical is forming part of our uh, life, even though there are uh, plus and the minus side of it, uh, today it has uh, been our, uh, it's becoming our life and it is also taking a part of our life. Now we have uh, our uh, second uh, speaker, he will be here to uh, share his thoughts, views and reflections uh, on the book, Mr. Mahendra. Uh, let me invite uh, the partner of S. Dhanapalan Associates and co-author of this book to uh, briefly introduce uh, Mr. Mahindra. Mr. Mahindra uh, is a BCom graduate from Lilo College and he is a charter accountant and he is one of the He's promoted the brand which we use daily, uh, Good Night. He has started his career with the Good Night and he has sold this brand to Godrej Group and uh, then he has carried on and he has an investment company by name uh, Mahindran Holdings uh, Limited and he is doing the business through that holding company and he is one of the promoters of Harway Hospital and he continues to be do so and uh, he's opened a brand company by name Daiki Brands Limited uh, which is being sold to Bennett Coleman and he continues to be in the board of the company. He is also the founder member and president of Home Insect Control Association and acknowledged authority of Home Pest Control. He is also part of the several industry forums such as FICCI, CI, IBHA, Bombay Chamber of Commerce. I now request Mr. Mahendra to give his thoughts on the book. Thank you. Uh, respected uh, dignitaries, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dalapal for uh, inviting me here. I'm uh, generally based in uh, Mumbai. But I do come to Chennai because uh, I am from Chennai. I did my chartered accountancy here in Chennai and then I left for Mumbai in 1980. Uh, so I have my patronage to Chennai on a monthly basis. I do come. And uh, I started my career as a practicing chartered accountant in Bombay and then went to the good night. I, so I know more or less uh, the professional career of uh, being a practicing chartered accountant. I finished in five years from 1980 to 85 and then after that uh, uh, got into business. So that's where I am. Uh, fundamentally my background is a fast moving consumer goods uh, manufacturing, branding and that's my profession right now. Now coming back to Mr. Dhanapal's uh, initiative, uh, the initiative what uh, he has taken when I heard about it from my friends and uh, from him, I am quite uh, impressed with the lead which uh, and the company secretary as well as I understand is the secretary for the Southern uh, India uh, Chartered Secretaries too. And uh, he has taken the lead of uh, this particular company law uh, focused uh, this uh, tribunal and uh, where this particular uh, in this particular format of a tribunal which has come recently uh, it is definitely from a corporate India point of view it is a, a very new uh, entrant where there is nothing but uh, a convergence 
of uh, three authorities, such as the <coughs> Company Law Board and then uh, the High Court. It's a merger of uh, the High Court and uh, Company Law Board and uh, BFR. So that three in one uh, constitute this uh, national uh, Company Law Tribunal, uh, which has been created by the government uh, recently. I think it is definitely a good thing for the corporate world in India. So the screen one coming into one uh, platform and uh, it's going to do a lot of uh, benefit to the country and the corporate world. Because uh, earlier, prior to this uh, <coughs> national uh, company law tribunal, we as a corporate India, whenever we have problems, uh, as well as uh, issues that company law board or uh, we have to go to the high court or from high court to the again back to company law board and then company law board back to uh, depends on the business uh, it gets into BAFR. So this convergence is a good thing uh, and, uh, and uh, what I would suggest is that uh, when I went through the book, the guide which is released today is certainly going to help uh, the corporate world as well as the professionals, uh, it's going to give a lot of uh, uh, help as a guide. But uh, I think the Nepal and team should do more of, uh, apart from uh, creating a guide, uh, if we can take a lead on guidance. Guidance is also important today, in the last uh, two, three years. There are a lot of things which uh, important, but we don't know how this uh, national company uh, <coughs> board uh, operates because of the convergence which they have had. So uh, my suggestion to Janapal would be, apart from today's uh, release of a guide, uh, if you can uh, take some lead on that, whatever lead you could do on uh, training is a very important part today for uh, this national capital law board tribunal because a lot of uh, uncertainties, a lot of things involved is there. Uh, so it will be help the uh, professionals if you can create some training modules for uh, the profession, apart from the guide which uh, beautifully you brought in, which I saw that. So the Chavi Kakonda, when I re read the guide shortly, and uh, it is very, very useful. So my only suggestion is you should extend it to training. And uh, if you can get it to a training module, it would help the uh, particular York. And uh, with that, I'd uh, like to wish Dhanapal uh, and team all the best. And as CK said, that uh, we need to expect uh, more uh, releases from Dhanapal. And all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mahendra. They say, Ni Siri to Pur, Unmoga Maragar Kum, Matravergal Siri to Vice to Pur, Unmoga Matravergal Karagar. We have our next speaker who will uh, actually take the entire audience uh, with his flow. A very, very nice orator, Sri G. Rajagopalan, the additional Solicitor General of India, Madras High Court. May I request a uh, uh, partner of S. Danapal Associates and co author of uh, the guide to NCLT and NCLAT, uh, Ms. Smita Chirima, to formally introduce uh, Mr. Rajagopal. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my proud privilege to be introducing uh, Shri G. Rajagopalan. He is a senior advocate practicing in the Madras High Court and the Supreme Court. Born in Tanjore, <laughs> Sir hails from a distinguished, long-standing legal family. His father was a leading member of the Tanjore Bar, while his eldest brother uh, was an Attorney General of India between the 1990 and the 1992. After his primary education at Tanjore, he shifted to Chennai in 1969. He studied in the Besson <coughs> Theosophical High School, Adyar pre-university at Guru, uh, Guru Nanak uh, College, degree in Vivekananda and law in Madras Law College. He enrolled as an advocate in 1983 and was designated as a senior advocate in the year 2000. Since then, he has been appearing as a senior counsel for various bodies, including the Election Commission of India, 
the Tamil Nadu State Information Commission, the Union Public Service Commission and the Delimitation Commission. In July 2014, the President appointed Sir as the additional Solicitor General of India in the Madras High Court for a period of three years. Since then, his tenure has been further extended till July 2019. He is also an active Freemason and a Rotarian. With the small words, I welcome you, Sir, and I request you to please come over and address the gallery. Chief Guest, Justice Kripagran, the common man's face in the bench of the Madras High Court. <laughs> and my dear friends, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, see, uh, uh, I am a fifth generation lawyer. The law consists of, uh, I think, uh, I have owned one of the largest libraries in southern India and I invest a lot of money in buying law books and journals and it is my humble opinion, this is one of the best book I have come across in the region. The reason is more than once, the law is two types. Law is uh, uh, either a substantive law which gives you right or take away your right. The procedural law is uh, how to enforce your right. You are not a complete lawyer or a chartered accountant or a company secretary. People do not know both. It is like a bull, gun and bullet. The bullet without a bullet, the gun is useless. Vice versa. Therefore, unless you are thorough with both substantive law as well as procedural law, you cannot uh, call yourself as a complete professional. Uh, in that sense, the book uh, written by Mr. Dhanapal will satisfy both. It deals with substantive law as well as procedural. And uh, I, when I went through it, uh, my old days memories told, told me there is something all of you know who studied Tamil, because I am a Tamil medium student. In spite of it, for uh, understanding Tamil poems, I need a toner of right. I don't know how many people are there. <laughs> so this, uh, when I saw this book, it was so, I mean, very simple. And it reminded me of Konar uh, Urai of uh, Tamil. So, so in an excellent manner uh, he has written. And uh, normally, we uh, say law is complicated, law is an ass. That is because you go behind it and try to do something with it. <laughs> if you directly face the law, there is no problem. The problem is, when you comply with law, there is no problem. When you disobey law, then the problem starts. And everybody wants to disobey law. That is the problem. More and more expertise. We, uh, the person who violates law, person who simply complies with law, go to an ordinary person, get these things done. The more and more you violate law, you go to a better lawyer or a better child accountant and try to see that uh, how to uh, get over a particular point and uh, later on get into problem and uh, instead, of, instead of paying uh, the lawyer that much of easy, he would have paid the tax itself. <laughs> so therefore, the first thing, any professional which I have followed right from my beginning that uh, you as far as possible try to advise the client to comply with you. Then if there is a borderline areas where you can use your brain and say no, no, this does not, uh, all those things are there. Therefore, I, I hope that the, every one of the professionals uh, in the state or in the country buy this book and, uh, uh, and help the client to comply with the law in a more effective manner. Thank you for giving this up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Raja Gopalan. All business operations can be reduced to two, three words. Very simple. People, product and profits. Unless you have got a very good team, you cannot do much with the other two. It also works equally for a not-for-profit organization also. But instead of these three words, except for the word profit, you will have purpose. Now, uh, here we have a person who leads a very, very big organization in the country. 
He started his uh, career from uh, Punjab National Bank and today he is the Chief of uh, Indian Overseas Bank. Sri R. Subramanya Kumar, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of uh, Indian Overseas Bank. May I request uh, Mr. Ramanathan to introduce Sri R. Subramanya Kumar. Mr. R. Subramani Kumar joined Indian Overseas Bank as the Executive Director on 29th September 2016 and was interested with additional charge of MD and CEO from 2016 and he is, his, turn, uh, his tenure has been extended further. He is currently the MD and CEO of Indian Overseas Bank and he has been instrumental in taking many initiatives across all areas in the bank to bring about a fast space performance enhancement. Yeah, he has taken a number of digital in initiatives and was deeply involved in formulating the bank's turnaround strategy. He is a techno banker and he has contributed to various IBA and IR, IDR BT committees and on, on technology and financial inclusion and was a core member of the Smart Card and Micro ATM Standards Committee. He, he was a guest faculty of IDRBT Hyderabad and organized training, staff training college. I request Mr. Subramani Kumar to share his views on that. Thank you very much. Especially the current situation where, thanks to our friends from media who have popularized everything and everything and anything about the banking. Now everybody knows about the banking, but there are many things which the bankers are not available. So come and see. Uh, respected and honorable uh, chief, uh, chief, guest, I mean, uh, chief guest of the day, uh, this is uh, Prabhagaran. I used to be amused with the way you just uh, pronounce your judgments, which uh, literally connect with the masses. Everybody has a contact list on the mobile. Probably few gentlemen like him have a connect with the people who has, uh, whose numbers are there. <laughs> Other uh, big interviews in the dice. Uh, it's indeed a great privilege for me to be in the mix of them. For all uh, the padali kaat me they used to say in Hindi, uh, the well learned persons in the respective areas who have established themselves in the respective areas. So when you talk about the topic, which is little uh, alien to the bankers, always to be from the prepared text. Otherwise, the learned people you, you should not make a mistake in the presence of them. First of all, I just wanted to compliment Dhanapal for the great work done. Now, what happens as a banker when you wanted to take a decision in the split of the second or within a shortest of possible time, you depend on the team which works with you. We have a great trust. One need to have a trust with the team which is just delivering. Nevertheless, at that point of time, sometimes, you know, Chinna Puri Dhanu, sort of right tapa. Where do I make a reference? If you just turn around, office would have built up a big library of books. Searching the books is a problem. Today's the hottest topic is your IBC, NCLT, NCLAT. So almost every second decision you take is because on that. There I must thank Mr. Dhanapal for providing me a bound book which I keep it in the library, an unbound book on the table, so that it doesn't occupy much space. So that make a reference quickly onto it and ensure that my GM recovery, Raghu, whatever he says is relevant. <laughs> Another thing is also there, I mean, uh, I've learned that the uh, original General mentioned about uh, Konar Vare. Tirukkur. Tirukkur is a lot of people who are learning a picture of a price. They are learning a lot of people who are learning a lot of people. They are learning a lot of people who 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 are learning a lot of people. Law book by itself, there are so many books have come. 
insincerity, being a banker, then you have to pick up many things. It love, it talks, number, at par. You have to read another page. You have to read, read to the references given in some other page, refer to the fourth page. Those kind of things is like a pilgrim. You can get the meaning out of it, it has a perfect one. But if the book is the book, and that is the book what this gentleman has just released to us. Thank you, Mr. Benapal, for coming over again. This will facilitate us to understand that art part, dollar sign, and one, two, three. Every page of the law will always have one, two, three. So that one, two, three will not know endless number. After nine, it will go. Next page will start one, two, three again. So that way, you just made our life easy. Thank you very much for uh, making a wonderful book. There are a lot of many things which we have to necessarily acknowledge. This is one of the far-reaching, one of the best legislation, if at all you wanted to give the best actor, best actor award. No? Best legislation award, if you wanted to give it, I would say that it is an IBCA, which has to be given the best, best legislation award, the simple reason. The World Bank, when they made an assessment about ease of doing business, they made a comment, comment Insolvency takes around 4.3 years, on average, in a country like India. This act has put it on the bullet train, 180 days and 270 days. This is something which is the phenomenal change, possibly that uh, down the line five years you would not have dreamt of it. Greatest, it is evolving. Evolving due to the luminaries, the people who interpret the law and then bring out the nuances which is just creating a yeah, small comma full stop difference between uh, the data and the data is evolving almost day by day. The beauty of the uh, act is that it is accepting the changes as fast as it is expected to be the delivery. It matters. 180 days, unless that act is amended within that period, the benefit of doubt or the person who would have gained it is being unnecessarily being put into difficulty. That way, this is one of the best evolving uh, act. Another important thing, a uh, committee has also been formed. The committee has brought about some of the phenomenal uh, recommendations, which is definitely a work and it is going to be watershed years as we move forward. First is the recommendation to allow the exit of an applicant for the corporate insolvency resolution process post admission. They are coming out with the recommendation for coming out with Abhimanyu Yugam to Arjuna Yugam. Go in and come out as you like. That's definitely there is something which is coming up as a banker, as a community which is just uh, deeply involved in this. We look forward to such kind of things. Recommendation to stipulate the requirement of special resolution by the shareholders of the corporate data. Or the resolution passed by at least three-fourths of the total number of partners of the corporate data for initiation of the corporate insolvency resolution process with the corporate data. It is plugging the loopholes which otherwise is being used, misused, or not properly used by some errant fellows. As a banker, we will look forward to that. This will always be up. The banker we have to trust. Accepting for the code which I wear out, the salary which I get, I don't hold anything in the bank. And I'll hold the trust. The trust is to be re-established. And this is one of the forward-looking <coughs> recommendations which is going to be of the great help to that community. Attempt towards comprehensive framework for cross-border insolvency. You all will immediately imagine what was flashing in front of the TV for the last couple of uh, weeks. This is something which is definitely will help us to pull the plug from elsewhere. The plug is there in beyond the shores. Still, we extend our arm to that and then pull it and then make use of it. It's a great recommendation. The recommendation to codify the application of Limitation Act of IBC proceedings is one of the far-reaching thought process which has been brought in. These recommendations, why I just brought it out is, we need annexure to the book. You can bring about all these kind of amendments because having given one volume of the book as a one point reference, I would suggest you to keep giving the annexure to the book in the form of a monthly release of the booklets. The pace at which the amendments are coming, the pace at which it is adapted, it has a tremendous impact on the way we are working on it. And IBC, if at all, it's a trend setting legislation 
which is continue to shape the course of the stressed asset resolution. The biggest credit if I wanted to give for this IBC, this is something it is aiming for resolution rather than liquidation, which we have been, as a banker, we deeply look into it right from the day one, the account is financed. If at all we wanted to reach a situation where it is a win-win for both the parties, this side and that side, greater and later, there has to be a handshake distance. This handshake distance is achieved by the resolution rather than liquidation. So definitely this uh, absolutely uh, gives that uh, comfort. In fact, this is a significant shift from one of the major facts as a banker, I would say. Debtor in possession regime is changing into the creditor in control regime, which is one of the promising act of this. Mr. Dhanapal has uh, put in heart and soul into it. I have uh, met on many occasions as uh, a professional who was trying to discharge his duties. He takes efforts. I must compliment the co-authors also for bringing out very lucid way. Turn any page. There is no need to refer the dictionary. That is the first thing which I just saw it. Normally, any book which is coming out, they will try to put in the best of the knowledge what they have gained over a period of 30, 40 years. There is no need to get into dictionary. It just flows in the way. The flow which I have brought in systematically from giving a definition from NCLT onwards, very lucid. My compliments to you and your team. And I am sure that the people who are all involved in this entire uh, activity will get a great uh, gainer. And I will say that you have brought in a leveler. Now, if you come as an RP to me, I will refer your own book and then tell you that which are the points you are not making it to me. So thanks for enabling and empowering uh, ordinary persons like us, the banker. Thank you very much. My best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Subramanya Kumar. Nokia refused Android, and Yahoo refused uh, Google. And what is uh, what happened is history. Lessons is uh, moral of the story of these two is take risk, embrace the changes. And if you refuse to change with time, you might not sustain. We have our uh, next speaker, and uh, he is actually uh, close to every one of us every day, right from uh, the time when uh, I am aware about what is happening in this world. <coughs> Newspaper means I am only uh, reminded of and fond of till date uh, the Hindu. We have with us the next speaker, Sri M. Ram, Chairman of uh, Kasturi and Sons uh, Limited. And uh, recently, a uh, few years back, they have also launched uh, the Hindu Tamil uh, newspaper. I had a very uh, fond opportunity, nice opportunity to be with them as part of their uh, GST awareness uh, campaign across Tamil Nadu. They have done a wonderful job independently taking a, not without any uh, political or uh, government initiative, independently they have taken initiative to create awareness for GST. And uh, whether uh, I have uh, traveled with them or uh, they have made me to travel with them, it was a wonderful experience uh, sharing uh, ODM along with the dignitaries, uh, especially on GST, on Tamil, we used to address uh, Tamil Peso, Enga Chennai, Madurai, Sivagasi, nook and corner of the country, they have uh, organized a program on GST awareness. Padma Bhushan Sri M. Ram, 72 years young, chairman of the The Hindu Publishing Group and former editor-in-chief of the Hindu and Group Publication, is a political journalist. He has written on a range of socio-political subjects and specialized in investigative journalism. 
He is the co-biographer of the Indian writer R.K. Narayan and his uh, most recent work is Why Scams Are Here to Stay, Understanding the Political Corruption in India. Mr. Ram was elected president of the contemporary India section of the 72nd session of the Indian History Congress. Some of the honors include for journalism Parmabhushan and the Sri Lanka's highest civilian honor given to non-nationals. Like uh, Bharat Ratna in India, it is Sri Lanka Ratna. The Asian Investigative Journalist of the Year Award from the Press Foundation, B.D. Goenka Award for Excellence, R.D. Tata Award for Business Ethics, and Columbia J School Alumni Award and uh, many more. Like you, I'm also very, very much eager to hear from Padma Bhushan, Sri and Ram. in the book, bring out the characteristics of the book and Mr. Raju Gopal has already brought out a very important point, I think, the, that it covers both substantive law and procedural law uh, in this particular area and uh, he has also given it high praise saying, I know his, uh, his and his uh, brother's law collections, DRs for example, and uh, they are reputed and if he says here openly that this is one of the best books that he has come across on a particular field, I think that is uh, high praise indeed. I got this book yesterday. In fact, I must say that uh, I believe that books must be bought and I'm quite uncomfortable when you get one, two, three copies of a book in a launch function. But of course we will share it with others or return it to the organizers because these books are quite expensive, are valuable and a lot of people would like to get their hands on it. I think the pricing is uh, reasonable. Reference was made to R.K. Narayan, the great Indian writer, and he used to say that books should not be released. They should be picked up from the shelves of libraries and bookshops. Uh, but uh, books also have to be launched so that people come to know about the book, the fact that there is this book, and also what the book offers, going into some detail, providing insights on, for example, the two aspects of law that has been that have been referred to. So I uh, particularly appreciate the fact that uh, this book has got a good reception already, to judge by the number of people here, as uh, the forward points out by our Honorable Judge. The, uh, it's involved a lot of hard work. It's characterized by clarity, clarity in a complex area, he says. And I think uh, as a layman, but with a lot of experience of uh, company law matters, my friend Arvind Pandian knows this, that we have been before the company law board and what came after it also uh, in our corporate domain and we know that uh, disputes of this kind take a long time to be resolved and talking to Mr. Rajagopal before this, he, he, I learned quite a, quite a few things that uh, the idea of 
entrusting these matters to specialized tribunals has a long history. And uh, during the previous government, a lot of tribunals were set up. And today, it, I think we have to look carefully at the staffing patterns and how long they take to uh, do their work to accomplish what they were set up to do. So without uh, any implication, negative or positive, about this work, I think the idea that we need specialized tribunals that's covered by the Constitution, and indeed uh, in, in the end of the first chapter, in the sum up, there's a very useful note, very useful summary of, uh, of, of what the idea was and where it is today. But the idea of specialized tribunals as quasi-judicial bodies to help the justice system in India to uh, overcome, to some extent, the problem of the law's delays, I think is a progressive idea and uh, a sound idea. But in practice, I think we have faced many problems. When you have judicial members and technical members, and sometimes uh, inadequate staffing so that uh, lawyers and others involved wait for a long time, as well as the victims of the law's delays. So I think uh, the idea that uh, with which uh, this book covers is a very important one. I also learned from Mr. Rajagopal that, uh, that there was an attempt to bypass high courts earlier, and the Supreme Court in a 1994 decision said that can't be done because of the scheme of the Constitution. I think these are very important things because you can't take shortcuts and uh, go straight to the Supreme Court in the name of uh, speeding things along. <laughs> so there are various aspects here, but, come to, but uh, what attracted me as a layman looking at a book, not, not just a book on NCLT or NCLAT, but as a book offer, which starts out to be a guide to so that people can rely on it, go back to it, not necessarily in one go, but repeatedly, in installments or partially, looking at units. So looking at the organization of the book, what attracted me was that, A, it is comprehensive, covering, as was mentioned earlier, substantive as well as procedural law, clear, as the forward points out, does this with professional expertise and hard work, authoritative, that is reliable, and also accessible. The, the uh, readership of the book, those who are meant to benefit from this would be practicing professionals as well as students. And to some extent, I think the book will serve other constituencies as well. For example, journalists covering company matters would also find this useful. Libraries would have them as reference books. And there are many others simply interested in the subject of the law uh, who I think will find this uh, useful. So I'm very happy that uh, this book is uh, accessible. On one other matter, and I'll just say a few words on one other matter and then close. Uh, this also seeks to cover the experience with the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Court of 2016, uh, which is a uh, project in the making. Uh, a lot has been written on it, and there is also a lot of uncertainty about it. Uh, and talking to some people who have uh, participated in the discussions on it, I learned a couple of things. One is that while much of the preceding discussion and reform of something that was overdue, focused on bankruptcies of companies, the insolvencies of uh, individuals and uh, partnership firms has also been brought under the code. And there are many unresolved matters. But one thing that uh, struck me was that in India, where many companies are controlled by promoters, the concern is that uh, Who's going to run them after they go through the process, liquidation and so on? Do they, will they come back? Will they be allowed to come back and carry on business as usual or business in a slightly different way, but doing the same thing, running the uh, business to the ground for whatever reason, sometimes beyond their control? Or will the law be able to keep up with uh, 
this yoga, this, this attempt to somehow manage to carry on business as usual without having to pay for the risks taken, pay for the losses and so on. These are issues that are of interest to more than company secretaries, lawyers and so on. A lot of us would be interested in those matters. For example, should the criminal law apply in these cases? Uh, what is criminality when it comes to bankruptcy and, uh, uh, and insolvencies and so on? Uh, there are many cases uh, on this, and these are wider issues on which we are interested. I thought, uh, I haven't read the section of the, the book which also covers the insolvency and bankruptcy court. Uh, a committee has been set up to review the whole thing, uh, but these are unsettled questions and there's a, there is a measure of uncertainty uh, about these matters. So the book obviously will go into further editions, updates and so on. <coughs> Finally, do you believe in uh, offering a digital version of this as a Kindle edition, e-book or whatever? I don't know whether those would be useful and so on, but I can see a use for it down the road. Uh, and uh, a lot of books, I, I, I read a lot of books on, on the Kindle editions. Uh, but uh, they may not, I don't know if there's a place for it. But if there is, then you should try to, then updating becomes uh, quite easy. Uh, if it's on the digital form, in addition, of course, to a printed book, which is primary. So thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, say a few things on this book. And I commend the authors, the foundation that has supported, as well as the printers.